All right, this is the third and final installment of measures of variability for ungrouped data. At this point, we are left with z-scores and coefficients of variation. So let's finish exploring this fascinating topic, and you guys can go back to watching YouTube videos of bulldogs riding on skateboards. So off we go. All right, let's think about z-scores. A z-score or a standard score measures the location of any individual value of x. Down here we have Winn-Dixie, value of x. Remember these are our x values. And we measure it relative to the mean. And we've already talked in the earlier videos that the way that we move up and down the curve is one step at a time and each step is expressed as a standard deviation. So the z-score basically says how far away is x from the mean and tell me based on or expressed in units of standard deviation. So the calculation is pretty easy but I want to make sure you understand what the z-score is actually telling you. All right, so we're going to start with Walgreens. Um, now, actually, I'm going to start with Winn-Dixie. Hang on. Sorry about that. Got my grocery stores confused. So I'm going to start with Winn-Dixie, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take their, the value of x, which is their revenue, minus the mean, which we found earlier, the mean revenue, and I'm going to determine how far is the Winn-Dixie X or revenue from the mean or average revenue. And I want you to express it to me in the units of standard deviation. We calculated earlier that the standard deviation was 18.19. And what it tells me when I do that math is negative 1.38. Now, what did I tell you guys earlier about the curve? I think I told you that this was the positive side because we were going up. This is the negative side of the curve. So as soon as you saw that z-score as a, as a negative 1.38, you know that that means that the revenue for Winn-Dixie at $7 or 7.87 falls minus 1 and then point. 38 standard deviations below the mean. So if I was walking down, up and down this curve, right here, if I was walking up and down it to find all of my values, if I step to the left, 1.38 standard deviations from the mean, then right here on that curve, based on this distribution, this point on this curve represents 1.38 standard deviations below the mean. Let me do Rite Aid and see if that one um, makes it a little bit clearer for you. All right, so now I've done the exact same thing for Rite Aid. I've taken my x value right here, x equals 17.27 subtracted it from the mean, remember I'm going right back up here to this formula, divided it or expressed it in terms of a standard deviation, again it's a negative number, which makes sense because 17.27 is smaller than the mean of 33.04. So if I want to find the right aid revenue number, I'm going to step down the curve to the left, 0.867 standard deviations from the mean. And if I go negative 0.867 standard deviations from the mean, I'm going to locate right there the revenue of Rite Aid. All right, I've jumped ahead and I went all the way up here to Safeway because I wanted to get one that was a positive z-score. Again, simply substituting into this formula, I'm going to say $40 40.19, which is that x value there, minus the mean, 
3304 expressed in terms of standard deviations gives me a positive a positive 0.393. What that tells me is that based on this curve that we've created here with a mean of 33.04 created from this data that the Safeway revenue is located positive positive 0.393 standard deviations from the mean. For z-scores, always take them out to two decimal places. Um, I take mine out to three usually, but we're usually two or three decimal places. Now, let me show you the magic of why this should be starting to make sense. All right, let me show you a little bit of, of why this makes sense. I'm going to go back and I'm going to use this right aid, this right aid z-score that I have right here as a negative 0.867. Look what happens when I start to roll through this. All right, I know that the right aid revenue, X, is equal to $17.27. So if I say 17.27 plus, remember up here we moved to the left, a negative 0 0.867 standard deviations. And I know that that was 0.867 standard deviations that were worth 18.19 each. So what should theoretically happen is this. Is I now take my $17.27 and remember I moved to the left, right? I moved to the left. I'm going to take that 0.867, multiply it by my standard deviation of $18.19, and I have it negative, a negative 1577. And somewhere in your math, you should remember that a negative minus a negative is a positive. So if I take 1727 and I add 1577, imagine this. I get $33.04 or $33.044 million. And what do I know? Where have I seen 33.04 before? Holy smokes, it's the mean. So all I've done is I've said that if every standard deviation is worth $18.19 and I move a negative 0.867 okay now I have no idea where I am because um, the front somebody knocked on the front door so um, let's do that one more time and to make sure that you all see where I'm coming from with this okay so I have calculated Walgreens z-score 47.41 minus the mean, 33.04, now expressed in standard deviations. The z-score of 0.789, or we could round it to 0.79, tells me that on this curve, this value of 47.41 will fall, because it's a positive z-score, 0.789 standard deviations from the mean. All this z-score tells you is, from the sign, it tells you whether you're on the left or the right side of the mean. The number tells you how many standard deviations you've moved. In the case of Walgreens, we've gone a positive 0.79 standard deviations. How do we know? Because mathematically it works. So what I've done here is I've said, here's my $47.41, and I moved a positive 0.79 standard deviations above the mean. So remember, I went 0.79 standard deviations up. Now, if I want to go back to the mean, I'm going to take that 47.41, and I'm going to subtract 
times 18.19. And I'm going to come up with, remember I'm going to move back from my z-score here. I want to move back to the mean. The way that I moved up was I went to the right 0.789 standard deviations. Now I'm going to come back to the left 0.79. Standard deviations and look what I end up 33.0399 takes me right back to the mean of 33.04. So a z score is nothing more than the location, the location of any individual value, any individual x value in the distribution that makes up the curve expressed in terms of the standard deviation of the distribution. So hopefully that makes it make a little bit more sense. Now, let's talk for just a minute about coefficients of variation. All right, the coefficient of variation, or CV, simply expresses, simply expresses the amount of variation in a data set as a percentage. And the way that it represents it as a percentage is we take the standard deviation of the data set, divide it by the mean, and then multiply it by 100. So for this data set, what we know, we can come way down here, rolling, rolling, rolling. All right. We know that the standard deviation is equal to 18.19. We know that the mean of the distribution is 33.04. So in order to calculate the coefficient of variation, we're simply going to take 18.19 divided by 33.04, which is going to give us 0 0.5507. In order to convert that to a percentage, we multiply it by 100, and if we take 0.5507 times 100, we end up with 55.07%. Now, the key to a coefficient of variation is it doesn't mean anything in and of itself. Coefficients of variation are used to compare more than one set of data in terms of the amount or the quantity of variation that is present in the distribution. Coefficient of variation, the lower the better, right? The lower the better. The lower your coefficient of variation, the less, I'm not much writing today, the less risk, the less volatility, the less dispersion, the less least amount of variation there exists in the data set. Let me show you how we can compare something else. All right, here are two sets of data. Um, this is the number of books that a bookstore sells in a month. This is the number of magazines that a bookstore sells in a month. They both collected seven months worth of data. Well, if I want to compare to see which varies most from month to month, I can't do anything looking at it like this. I mean, I can't draw any conclusion. That's where my friend coefficient of variation comes in. Because if I know the mean and the standard deviation for books and magazines, I can now tell you which of these two data sets is the most variable or has the most fluctuation within the data. So what I've done is I've just used, um, I just used the computer because I've cheated and I've come up with the descriptive statistics for books and for magazines. And you can see for books I have a mean of 497.71, standard deviation 43.34, a mean of 141 and a standard deviation of 28.2 for magazines. 
Now what I can do is I can calculate a coefficient of variation for books and another one for magazines and I'm going to compare them and I'm going to be able to draw a conclusion as to which data set is the most variable. So all I've done is I've just dropped the, the necessary numbers into this formula and for the books I'm using, up here at books, I'm using the mean, the standard deviation of 43.34, the mean of 497.71 times 100 and I know now that the percentage or the degree of variation in this data right here for books is 8.707%. I've turned around and done the exact same thing for my magazines, except I've used the standard deviation of 28.02, the mean of 141.43 times 100, converted it into a percentage, and I come up with 19.81. Well, that's based on this set of data. So, if I want to know or now draw a conclusion as to which data set possesses the greatest degree, the greatest degree of variability, and I want to actually compare books versus magazines that have nothing to do with one another, I can use these two coefficients of variation, compare them, and draw the conclusion that the magazines are the most variable, most unreliable, most changing fluid um, item out of the two that the book store sells. So, um, not a hard, not a, a hard com, uh, computation at all, but one that's very useful when we have multiple sets of data that we need to compare. So, we have finally reached the end. Um, I know it was fascinating. Um, I know it was riveting, but more than anything, I hope it was helpful. Thanks, guys. See you around.